Ladies and gentlemen, inductee Jackson Riggs Stevenson. Jackson Riggs Stevenson was born in Akron, Alabama on January 5th, 1898 to James and Addie Stevenson. He was the youngest of four children, brothers Julian, J.W., and Gardner, and a sister, Marie. J.W. became the first football coach at Marshall County High School in 1915 and took his little brother Riggs with him to Gunnersville. Following two years as a standout player in football and baseball, this graduation program from 1917 shows Riggs and his classmates upon their graduation from MCHS. J.W., or Coach Steve as he was later called, moved to Jacksonville State Teachers College in 1917 where he coached and taught until his retirement in 1954. The physical education building is named the J.W. Stevenson Gymnasium in his honor. Riggs then took his athletic prowess to Tuscaloosa where he played football, basketball, baseball, and ran track. He became a three-year starter at fullback for the Crimson Tide in 1917, 19, and 20. As a freshman, he started every game and scored five touchdowns against Ole Miss. Due to World War I, there was not a team fielded in 1918. However, with Stevenson leading the way for legendary coach Zen C. Scott, the Tide went 18-2 in his final two seasons, including Bama's first ever 10-win season. Scott said Stevenson was better than the legendary professional and Olympic athlete Jim Thorpe. Later, as a professional baseball player, Riggs had the opportunity to meet Jim Thorpe in person. Riggs was selected as the university's best all-around athlete three years and named to the All-Southern Team and Second Team All-American in 1920. As a player, he was nicknamed Ol' Hoss because he was hardworking and faithful, just like the family horse. Dr. George H. Denny, president of the University of Alabama, called Stevenson the embodiment of cleanliness, manliness, and courage. During his playing days at Bama, he sustained a serious shoulder injury that would follow him throughout his professional baseball career. While still in school at the University of Alabama, the Cleveland Indians contacted him about playing Major League Baseball because their regular second baseman was injured and the backup had a broken arm. They needed someone fast, and Cleveland manager Tris Speaker knew about the skinny kid from Bama. UA President Dr. George Denny gave Riggs permission to leave school before the opening day of the Major League Baseball season and return later to finish his degree. His first game with the Indians was on opening day, April 13, 1921. Stevenson got two hits off of St. Louis spitball pitcher Irvin Shocker and thus began a pro baseball career that would last 14 years. When the regular players returned, Riggs spent most of the next two seasons on the bench. However, Speaker thought Stevenson might make it as an outfielder, so he was sent down to the minors to learn that position. He went to Kansas City first and then to Indianapolis, where he was spotted by Chicago Cubs manager Joe McCarthy. It wasn't long before the Cubs bought Riggs' contract and he moved to the National League team. Riggs played 14 seasons with the Major Leagues from 1921 to 1934. As a Cub, he never hit below 319 until his final season. Riggs played in two World Series against the Philadelphia Phillies in 1929 and the New York Yankees in 1932. He had a combined 378 batting average in those two series, including an astounding 444 against the Yankees. Known as the Bronx Bombers, the Yankees starting lineup in 1932 included Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and former Crimson Tider Joe Sewell. Sewell said that Stevenson, who hit in the cleanup spot, was the guy that the Yankees feared the most as a hitter. It was in that series, with Riggs playing left field, that the immortal Babe Ruth pointed to center field and slapped a Charlie Root pitch over the scoreboard for arguably the most famous and controversial home run in baseball history. Riggs later said that he was way out in left field and could not see exactly what the Babe did, but he definitely made some sort of motion with his hand. Stevenson's batting average was over 300 in 12 of his 14 Major League seasons. 
1928, he led the National League in doubles. Riggs led the Cubs in batting in five of his nine seasons there, but his best year was 1929, when he hit 362 with 17 homers and 110 RBIs in 136 games. Riggs' lifetime Major League stats document his hard-working reliability and dependability as a player and hitter. He played in 1,310 games, had 4,508 at-bats, 1,515 hits, 714 runs, 63 home runs, 773 RBIs, a lifetime slugging percentage of 880, and a batting average of 336. This was the 22nd highest batting average in the modern history of Major League Baseball and the highest average of any eligible player not inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Following his playing career, Riggs married Alma Chadwick in 1933. He met Alma when he was sent to Hot Springs, Arkansas to rehabilitate his nagging shoulder injury. The couple had two children. Jackson, Jack Stevenson Jr., who resides in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Marla Sayers of Tuscaloosa. Stevenson retired from Major League Baseball due to longtime shoulder and leg injuries in 1934. He became the manager of minor league teams in Indianapolis, Birmingham, Montgomery, and Helena, Arkansas. He then returned to Alabama and opened a lumber business in his hometown of Akron and an automobile dealership in Tuscaloosa. Riggs was inducted into the third class of the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame in 1971 and is the fifth member of that hall to also be inducted into the Marshall County Sports Hall of Fame following John Hanna, Hugh Shorty Ogle, Charlie Pell, and Charlie Hanna. Jackson Riggs Stevenson passed away on November 15, 1985 at the age of 87. However, the legacy of the old Hawks still inspires Crimson Tide players and fans today. Ladies and gentlemen, Class of 2014 inductee, Jackson Riggs Stevenson. <laughs>